Hey guys, it's Austin. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. This is going to be my Christmas buying guide. So if you're a fisherman and maybe you don't know what you want for Christmas or people are asking you what to get and you're like, man, I don't really know what I want. Or maybe you're buying for somebody that is a fisherman and you have no idea uh, what to get them. This is kind of some of my recommendations. I'll go over rods, reels, baits, clothing, and additional accessories that I like. So we'll start with the rods. Before I go any further though, I'm just gonna say everything on here is basically from Tackle Warehouse or on Tackle Warehouse. And I'm doing that just because the website's laid out very nicely and it's easy to see all the descriptions and everything. Uh, feel free to shop around to get the items wherever you want. Support your local small fishing shops, whatever. But this is just to give some people some ideas. And like I said, it's laid out very nice. So for the rods, I have two different tiers. I have uh, Dobbins Champion Extreme, a little bit more expensive, and the St. Croix Legend Tournament, which is also more expensive. And then these are both a little bit more uh, budget oriented rods. So we'll start with the Dobbins here. Pretty pricey for a rod, but they're very balanced, very sensitive. If somebody really likes to fish, they're going to appreciate this rod, especially for bottom contact baits. If you don't know what size to get somebody, uh, this would be a basically very neutral size, seven foot heavy. You can do a lot of different techniques with it. The St. Croix Legend Tournament. Now on Tech Warehouse, they're about out here. I don't know if they're having supply issues or what, but um, this rod, very nice, made in America, excellent warranty. St. Croix is a very, very uh, good company. This rod's also very sensitive, arguably just as sensitive as the Dobbins I just showed. But, uh, you know, shop around some different websites. Tackle Trap is a good website you can look on, or you could look on eBay, or go to your local fishing shop and see if they have anything. Same thing, seven foot medium heavy or seven foot heavy on the St. Croix would be very nice. So here is the Dobbins Fury. It's being a little bit slow, but obviously a little bit more budget oriented on the price. The rod is still very balanced, very sensitive. As far as size goes, it's really hard to beat the seven foot heavy or the seven foot medium heavy, uh, but you have plenty of options here. This would be a great rod for somebody who likes to fish, who's still serious about fishing, maybe doesn't want to have as much money spent on a fishing rod. And I totally get that. These are, these are great rods for the price. They're really, really hard to beat. So. That's another one. And then the last one here is the Falcon Lowrider, about the same price. I've been using this for a little over a year. It's done everything I've asked it to. I have the seven foot heavy is a great all around rod. So around seven foot heavy or seven foot medium heavy, uh, fast action is a very, very neutral position. You can use it for a lot of different techniques. So that is the rods. Now we go to the reels. Daiwa Tatula 100. This is probably my number one pick. So this comes in at 159, a little bit pricey, but it's a very, very nice reel. Uh, for general purposes, I would get a seven one to one ratio. You can do an eight one to one if somebody's flipping. And if you know that they're using it for maybe bigger, heavier baits or crank baits or something, maybe they've specified that to you. Uh, six, three to one is the size that you're gonna want. Very good reel, good uh, brakes on the side. They can control very easily and limit backlashes. Definitely one of my top favorites. Now we'll go on to the Tatulo CT. This is just a little bit cheaper than the Daiwa 100, but still a very good reel. Now, one thing about this is it's a little bit smaller, compact. The spool is not quite as big. It can't fit as much line on it, but still an excellent reel for flipping, pitching, uh, throwing spinner baits, pretty much most everything besides maybe deep cranking or throwing like an A rig or something, just because the spool size is, is a little bit smaller. But same thing, seven, three to one on this for most techniques. You can do a little bit faster uh, if you know they're using it for just like flipping or something very specific, or if you're gonna use this for heavier baits. But again, I would shy away from this reel for anything that you can make a very long cast with because you can cast out the reel. So Daiwa Tatulo CT, excellent reel, a little bit better price point. Now moving on to the next Shimano Corrado. Now there are different levels of the Shimano Corrado. This is just one that I picked, which is a 200K. It's a little bit pricier, uh, but it is a very quality product still. Now these have the external cast control as well. A little harder to see. It's actually a dial right here though, instead of on the side, like on the Tatulas. Very nice product though. The Corrado name has been around for a very long time and is very trusted by a lot of anglers. So if you have a serious uh, fisherman that you know like Shimano, this would be an excellent buy for them. Same thing on the gear ratios. I would go with a 741 is, is pretty much in the middle of all this. Uh, if you want anything that is specific, you know, to flipping, pitching, 
could maybe do the faster one. And, you know, if they're throwing a little bit heavier baits than the 6-2 to 1, would probably be good. The, the 5-0 is, is pretty slow. But overall, very good reel. Now we'll go to the Luz Pro SP. This is a little bit special. This is uh, for skipping and pitching, basically. This is something that would really work good at like the Ozark since there's so many docks and people are skipping and pitching, especially if you're trying to learn how to do that technique. So this is a reel uh, that Luz came out with pretty recently. You can see pretty expensive and it actually has a shallow spool, very shallow spool. So this is gonna limit the backlash. So if you ever hear somebody talking about they're trying to skip and things are not going well. They're getting frustrated, backlash, whatever. This would be an excellent reel for them. Now keep in mind, this is very, very technique specific and that's all they're gonna be able to use it for is flipping and skipping docks. So keep that in mind. And as you can see, the gear ratios reflect that and they only have very high ratios. So that is a little bit of a specialty thing for like the Ozarks. Uh, if that's something that you know somebody might be interested in, or maybe you are. Now, we'll go on to baits. Now, these baits are also, I would just call them Ozark-style baits. I'm not going to say they're specifically for Lake the Ozarks. All these things will also work uh, at like Table Rock, Pond de Terre, Stockton, anything in the Ozark region. But uh, some of these colors are a little bit more Lake the Ozark-specific. But that certainly doesn't mean that they won't work elsewhere. First up is a Spro Rock Crawler. Excellent bait. Catch a lot of big fish on these and catch just a lot of fish in general even uh, and cover a lot of water with them. Nice quality baits, quality hooks, uh, and they just flat out catch fish. And really, really good in the Ozarks, bumping them off rock and stuff. So some colors that I really like are Molten Crawl. You've got Red Bug. Uh, Ozark Crawl is good. You can do a little bit of peanut butter jelly down at Table Rocks, good. And then like this Phantom Green and Phantom Brown will all be excellent colors to get, or even Spring Crawl for somebody. And they would be very happy with those, especially come springtime. So that is a classic uh, bait there. Next up, if they like to fish jerk baits, is a Mega Vast Vision 110. These, first thing you're going to notice, very pricey. Some colors I like is the classic LG Bone here. The, uh, either of the French pearls are good, just, just standard white, so it's always uh, classic. Then uh, going down to this Pro Blue, very good color. Uh, let's see here. No, down here. Oh, yeah, here we go. A little Ozark Shad. I like this a lot. And then a very popular color also at like the Ozarks is this color, Wake and React. Any of those would be excellent colors uh, for somebody that likes to fish jerk baits. And if they do like to fish jerk baits, they're going to know the Mega Bass name, so that's always good. Next up, this is a little bit different. Uh, this is an E-Factor Lures. I just kind of started using these spinner baits, and I liked them. I, I liked them so far, so I'm going to go ahead and recommend them. This is a little bit more of a local company. I believe they're actually out of Illinois, but it's not so mass-produced. They're all handmade one at a time, uh, so we'll just click on these. They have a little bit bigger blades than normal. And they also have the hammered blades a lot uh, as an option. So these are all good baits. Standard for a spinner bait, if you don't know what to get for somebody, would be a half ounce. Get some combinations with uh, gold blade, silver blade, and then th these are all chartreuse and white. This is a little bit like dirtier water uh, category. And if you want something that looks a little bit more natural or a little bit more clear lake, like table rock, these mouse colored ones, which imitate a shad, would all be excellent picks. And like I said, half ounces. Pretty standard, you can go three quarter ounce as well if you want for somebody that's fishing a little bit deeper. Uh, next up will be a little top water action here. We'll talk about the Whopper Plopper, excellent bait, I like the Ozarks. Pretty much the only two colors you need are Bone and Loon and get it at the size 130 will work. Uh, you catch big fish on that. If someone likes to throw top water, that's excellent. Another type of top water bait you could throw that I didn't put on here just because I'm trying to not make the steak forever is a buzz bait and you can get crocker gator strike king any of those in a half ounce or three quarter ounce buzz bait would be great last but not least for kind of the hard baits is a classic jig i just threw this in here this is an omega pigeon jig uh, this is good jig company you can also use a crocker gator jig company or you could even get some of my homemade jigs if you contact me basic colors black and blue or a brown is really good just a straight brown this is a watermelon that's a good color or any type of green pumpkin those are very uh, pretty neutral colors that are going to catch fish anywhere. As far as size goes, usually half ounce. This is 7 16, so it's close. But if you go back to Omega Jigs, they have all different sizes. Uh, if you want to do a finesse jig, like a 5 16 is a good size. But if you want to do a regular uh, pitching jig, like this flipping jig, or uh, Pro Mega, like this, 
you know, half ounce is, is a good standard size. So that's something you can't go wrong with, especially in the Ozark region. Now we will go into some plastics. Uh, these same thing, really good at like the Ozarks. They will work all over, but these are just some things that I would like to recommend. Number one, classic Zoom Brush Hog. Uh, green pumpkin, watermelon, red, and black. Those are the colors you pretty much need to think about and get the size standard here. This is a classic. Uh, bait that they can use from spring all the way to the fall and catch fish on it. You could probably use it in the winter too, but I prefer spring to fall with the profile and stuff. And you're gonna you catch big fish on that, and it's very versatile. Next up, another Zoom product, Magnum Trick Worm. This is great for throwing shaky heads. Uh, black and green pumpkin are pretty much the only two colors I'm gonna throw. That'll get you covered. You could throw like a bubble gum or uh, white during the, the spawn. And I guess you could also throw in like a watermelon red as another color uh, somebody could throw. But that gets you covered. And somebody likes to throw shaky heads or fishes like the Ozarks, they'll definitely get a lot of use out of those. Next up is another bait that's going to catch fish pretty well anywhere you go. And that is a Senko. Now, different brands of Senkos. Yamamoto here, this is the original. They are the best. They have a lot of salt in them. They have a little bit different action. They're very soft. Uh, but with that being said, they tear super easy. And they are expensive. They're almost a dollar a bait, I think, with some of the packs. But you can get different brands like a Yum Dinger or a Strike King. Uh, I think Ocho is the brand. You buy those in big bulk packages. But as far as colors go, I'm pretty much using black, green pumpkin, or like a black and blue. And you could use a white or a, a gray shad color. You'll have the bases covered for anybody to catch fish pretty well year round with the Senko. Very versatile bait. They can flip with it. Um, throw it in ponds, you, they catch fish anywhere. And usually size uh, the five inch worm is uh, a good starting spot. So one final thing here is dip and dye, which is kind of an accessory to the plastics. Main color you're gonna need is chartreuse, and I get it in the garlic scent. This will last a long time. There's some other brands that have dip and dye, but they're in like a glass jar and they leak out and they destroy everything they touch. This to me has been a, a good alternative to that brand. Uh, I've had one bottle for, geez, over a year, year and a half, and it doesn't leak. I keep it in my boat all the time, and uh, it works really well. So that's something that can add a little zazz to the plastics, a little more visibility. So the next thing is clothing. The first thing are these gloves, Fish Monkey Long Wool Gloves. These things are awesome. Uh, I have another pair of Fish Monkey gloves. I actually have these stealth dry ones. They are waterproof, but I end up wearing these pretty much 90% of the time. I think I fished down temperatures around 10 degrees last year with these on, and it was awesome. Uh, they got the leather palms. I've had them for two seasons now, and they hold up great. So entering my third season with them, and they look pretty darn good. Uh, relatively cheap. If some, you know somebody that likes to fish during the winter, uh, that's something that's going to help them out. And just on the same page, if you know somebody and they're like, man, I, I don't want the fingers on there, they do have the uh, half-fingered version, but I've found that I can do everything I want with the full-fingered version. I can skip, pitch, whatever, throw spinning reels, and it doesn't really interfere once you get used to it a little bit. Next up are some sun shirts. These are pretty much what I live in in the summertime when I fish, and Aftco is an awesome brand for that. This is uh, has the hooded version, kind of put a hood up. I tried it this year, it's actually pretty nice because you can kind of cover your ears without having to have a buff on. You can still breathe, but your ears won't get uh, all sunburned. If you do not want the AFCO brand or somebody wants a different brand, uh, the Columbia Sun Shirts are really nice. They're just the Columbia PFG. They're about the same price as the AFCO. The only thing I could say about the Columbia is they run very large. The AFCOs run very true to size. But the Columbias are huge. As a reference, I normally wear a size large shirt and I have to order a size small Columbia shirt because otherwise they will swallow you. Next up is some rain gear. Now this is a little bit pricey. Um, so if you are buying this for somebody, you might want to reach out and you know double check that maybe this is the brand they want or if they're undecided or you're undecided on what brand you might want. These are some of my recommendations. Now, first up is the AFCO Hydronaut. I actually have this coat. I do not have the bibs though. It is a very nice set altogether. It will keep you very dry. I was not a huge fan of the style of the bibs. They're a little bit different and they're actually not on the Tackle Warehouse website. I'll show you here in just a second. But just know that this is a very 
heavy coat weight wise. So I'll show you what the bibs look like here. See, they are a little bit different. They are not quite the same uh, as other bibs. They kind of have this style right here. So just know that if you buy the whole set, they're not traditional uh, looking bibs. Now, moving on from that, I have these bibs right here, which is the Guidewear Extreme from Cabela's. They're very, very nice. And the coat that comes with that is also very nice, but I ended up having the AFCO coat first. So I kept that. And the last one on the list is the Bass Pro Shops 100 mile an hour suit or just the plain Gore-Tex suit, which is basically the same thing as Cabela's Guidewear. Since Bass Pro brought Cabela's, it's kind of all been shuffled into kind of the same thing. They just put a different name on it. So the final thing in the clothing is a down jacket. Since my Aftco coat was so heavy and it was kind of restricts mobility a little bit and you don't have a total need for it unless it's actually inclement weather, uh, I ended up buying one of these down jackets, which are awesome because they're super lightweight and they're super warm and you still have a lot of mobility. They're pretty much windproof and it's just a nice alternative to having to wear a big bulk and coat all day long. You feel a lot better at the end of the day. So I ended up getting mine from REI. It's very similar to those coats, not the exact one, but uh, this is a good option. I found that the hiking stores and stuff a lot of times have a little bit better quality than buying something necessarily from a fishing brand. With that being said, I also do have an Aftco down coat, and that is actually really pretty good quality, but I do think that the REI coats are a little bit nicer. Or you can get from another hiking outlet like backcountry.com or something like that. They'll all have nice products. The final category here is accessories. And now these are things that I've been using for years. I've done testing, swapped things out, and tried to fine tune it, get it to you know the best possible product that's gonna last a long time. So first up are these scissors. They're super handy, they're small, and they're just crazy sharp and they stay sharp for a really long time. So they're cheap. Buy like two pairs. I keep some in a box that I fish in other places, and I keep at least one to two pairs in my boat in case one goes overboard. I just have extra. Someone's fishing with me. We both need to cut stuff at the same time. Tying on nice little scissors. They're, they're very small. They're affordable, and they cut braid uh, like nobody's business. It's just nice overall small profile, and they've uh, stood the test of time. Now I learned years ago uh, that you should just quit buying things that are branded specifically for fishing when it comes to anything with tools usually because they're junk. So go out and you buy yourself one nice pair of quality pliers like these channel locks and they'll last you pretty much a lifetime as long as you don't drop them in the lake. So that is a big recommendation. Maybe once a year, hit them with a little WD-40, keep them working, keep them loose. But uh, the side cutters are super sharp. They don't have like a lot of slop in them side to side. Got a cut a hook, you can even cut it with these. Just something that's nice to keep in the boat that's a quality tool and it's really gonna last you a long time. You don't gotta deal with uh, being aggravated or some cheap pliers, and you don't gotta pay $50 for some special fancy fishing pliers that are, you know, just overpriced marked up thing when that, that's all you need. Next up is a scale. So this is uh, kind of a little two-piece combo. So first thing you're gonna need is a little Fish Grip Junior here. These are very nice. They last uh, pretty much an indefinite amount of time unless you drop them in the lake without the floaty thing connected to a fish and a scale. Ask me how I know. So you clamp that on the fish and then you can go ahead and get yourself a nice little luggage scale. And we've actually been using these scales for years. My first scale lasted, I think, four years before it finally gave it up. And it, got, it basically got too much water. I left it out in the rain. And uh, now I have another scale that I ordered, oh, just a little over two years ago, it's still going strong. Nathan has one, Ryan has one. We all have this same scale and they're they're good, they're very accurate. The only thing you need to do is add a uh, split ring, go to like the hardware store and get a split ring that fits in this connected ring. I cut this hook off and then uh, connect that to your little fish grip junior. And you've got a basically a $50 scale that they sell normally. You got it for just over 20 bucks. Next up is a hook file, something that everybody needs to keep in their boat. You ever fish around rocks for a day and you start feeling your hook and you go, man, that thing needs to touch up. This is a great little file. Same thing, it's gonna last you a long time. I keep one in my boat. I can touch up a hook really nicely. It has a fine grit side and a rough grit side. So if you need to move a lot of material, you can flip it over and then you can get it fine tuned on the uh, very fine side there. It also has this groove that helps get your hook point you know, the, sh the shaping of it very easily. So you don't have to be some master sharpener. Touch up your, your hooks really easy. And the final thing here are rod gloves. Cannot live without these. I got first sets of rod gloves probably over 10 years ago uh, when we first got our boat. 
and started driving around with rods and the rod locker without these on and you get to your spot and you try and get your rod out and there's six of them tangled together so you get these things they're cheap buy this brand don't don't really waste your time with anything else these are nice quality they put a nice heat shrink on the end you know mine look definitely helps you stay organized help keep things from getting so cluttered and tangled and it also protects your rod I, a lot of times if i fish somewhere else and i have my rod in the back of the truck whatever i can put these on and i can put put the rods down in the back of the truck and protect them i don't have broken guides i don't have things getting banged up scratched because this is helping protect it a lot so that is the end of my buying guide uh, hopefully, you know, if you needed some ideas for Christmas, this give you some ideas. If you're trying to buy something for somebody, hopefully also give you some ideas or some things you can buy. I have tried to put a few different price points in there. You know, you have pretty expensive stuff, the rods, and then some of the reels are expensive. The rain gear is obviously very expensive, but I try to keep some other things, you know, more affordable. You don't have to buy a huge present for somebody, but something uh, just to give you some ideas. If you have any questions about anything or what you should get for somebody or what I would recommend if, you know, certain technique or what they like to do or where they like to fish, uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment. I will respond to you and try and help you out. I'm going to try and go fishing on Sunday, I think, up at Lake the Ozarks. So I should have a fishing report for you uh, mid next week. So thanks for watching and good luck out there.